Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Stephanie. This is our look into our grammar for past and present for first grade. Thank you so much again for visiting Rise, Read, Shine. So this video is less of a haul and more of talking about what we are using for grammar this year and why, talking about what we've used in the past and what did or didn't work for us. So starting off, the plan for this year for grammar is to use Evan Moore's Skill Sharpener's Spell and Write Grade 1. I've already shown this book in past videos and featured it in a take look video if you want to see the inside of it. Uh, but this book I love because it just has a little bit of light grammar and punctuation skills in it, such as introducing nouns and verbs. It has a few contractions. Uh, it has sentence writing skills, capitalization, punctuation. I just wanted a light introduction of grammar for now until she is reading and writing more fluently. I also purchased the Evan Moore Skill Sharpener's Grammar and Punctuation Grade 1. I go more in depth on another video with this as well. And this book covers parts of speech, introducing them, and using different punctuation concepts in sentences. I like these workbooks because they are very bright, colored, and engaging for children. And basically one page is a lesson, so you can just do one page for a day and be done. It's short and sweet. I also plan to add in books for reading about grammar this year. Uh, I picked up these two, The Basher Basics, Grammar, The Bill of Rights, and Punctuation, The Right Stuff. These are created by Basher and written by Mary Budzik. These books again have a short, just one page explanation. So it goes right from noun to verb. This book gets a little more in depth, so we may be using these books as reference past first grade. But I really like that these books are just an inside look at basic grammar and punctuation concepts. For example, a period is the first lesson. A colon, semicolon are among the last lessons. I didn't realize this before. I just noticed that these books have posters in them. Ooh. That's great. Okay, my grammar one does not have a poster, but my punctuation one does have a poster at the end. For another reference type book for grammar, I purchased the Usborne First Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation. This book has a great overview of why we need grammar. The main parts of speech are covered on more pages. This looks like a six page spread just about nouns in general. And then two pages for pronouns. This book also gets a little bit more in depth than I believe should be used for first grade. So it will be great to use it for reference while writing, learning to write sentences or paragraphs. I really enjoy adding in books, not just workbooks, for our studies. So I'm really glad I got these, even if they are just going to be utilized for references. A few of the other books that I want to include as reference books or as read-alouds include the Words Are Categorical series. I don't have those books. I thought about buying them on thrift books because I could not find them on Amazon for cheaper than $60 for six books. So I looked on Epic in the springtime and I found them on there. So I wanted to be able to use those books. So we will probably use them on Epic. I did notice on Amazon that they are also available on Kindle Unlimited for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And you can buy the individual books on Amazon but we are going to be using Epic and YouTube for a majority of our picture books this year for our curriculum, so I'm just going to use them on Epic. 
for those of you who don't know, Epic is an app for children's books, and they have a lot of great things on there. It's an app that you subscribe to and pay monthly for, or you can just pay outright for the whole year if you'd like. I can also post a link down below for that. But the Words Are Categorical series look great. They have fun titles like A Mink, A Fink, A Skating Rink, What is a Noun? Or Hairy, Scary, Ordinary, What is an Adjective? Uh, the Categorical series also has other book series about math, reading, memorization, food groups, and animal groups. I believe I saw a few of the math books on Epic as well, but I'm not completely sure if they have all of them. I also believe I saw some of the reading is categorical books on there. The other digital resource I wanted to include, which I also found on Epic, is the No Nonsense Guide to Grammar by Heidi Fiedler. I did find it on Amazon, but it was $55 just for one book plus shipping, and I'm not going to pay that much for it. So if it is on Epic, we're going to utilize it on Epic. The last book I have for grammar for this year that we may or may not get to is Mad Libs, and I have a great big Christmas one here. This is a Mad Lib that I purchased for my kids. I didn't realize it would be all one big book. This actually contains 10 different Mad Libs books. I like that they're all different themes. It has Christmas Carols, Field Trip, Give Me Liberty, Gobble Gobble, History of the World, Mad Scientist, Spy, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, Winter Games, and Grab Bag, which is like a mixture. You can see I've marked it to show all of the different books that are in it. So we may or may not get to this book. I want to utilize Mad Libs later on for my daughter once she has a concrete grasp of the different parts of speech. This will mostly just be for a fun refresher review. For this year, I also considered using Grammar Galaxy for grammar. This may be one we revisit in the future, I'm not really sure yet. We did try the sample lesson and we actually did the whole weekly lesson all in about 20 minutes. My daughter enjoyed it and she understood the concept after we were done with the, the sample lesson. I'm not sure if she is quite ready for it. I don't know if we want to have a whole long story about a grammar lesson every week. Our curriculum is Charlotte Mason style, so we already have a lot of read-alouds, and this just kind of adds extra an extra read-aloud, extra long story. Grammar Galaxy also seems to get in-depth with their lessons, and first I want my daughter to have a firm foundation of phonics and reading before she gets really in-depth with grammar. For now, I plan to stick to learning the basic parts of speech for sentence building and analyzing. In the past for curriculum, we have used Brave Writer Arrows. We didn't really use it a lot, we just tried the sample lesson, which was Charlotte's Web, and I decided to do it to go along with our literature lesson for Build Your Library. I don't think I would use Brave Writer Arrows as a supplement again to go along with our curriculum. It was just a lot, but I would definitely use it for a separate literature unit as part of a study unit or something. I'm not sure if we enjoyed the French style of copy work and dictation. We got so used to using original type, so we kind of started skipping that after a while. In the past, we have also used first language lessons for the well-trained mind by Jesse Wise. This is definitely a Charlotte Mason favorite. We like the fact that it's Charlotte Mason style and we really enjoy the poetry memorization. However, I personally and I think my kids kind of did not enjoy the repetition of it. It was just very repetitive it's more of a mastery approach, which I thought would be better for us, but it turns out that's not better for us. I believe the first 40 lessons were just about learning what a noun was, which just started to be a lot. 
it was nice because my youngest learned what the definition of a noun was at the time, but she could not tell you what it is now. We like having an extra separate curriculum for ELA, but I found that we don't really like having two different Charlotte Mason style types of curriculum. It just created for a lot of extra copy work. In the past, we have also used Easy Peasy Language Arts Grade 1. This book has great phonics incorporation, which I liked. And also shorter lessons like Evan Moore does, but it also just kind of created more extra copy work for us. Some of the days had only copy work. This is lesson day 106, day 107, day 108, day 110 is just copy work, which it's just one sentence, so it's not a lot, but this was on top of our other copy work that we already had. So overall, I prefer the Evan Moore workbooks for grammar. They are short and fun. They have easy to the point lessons. Uh, they are more of a classical style, which is fine. We are eclectic learners, so we like to add different learning styles, and it works well with not having all of our curriculum to be Charlotte Mason style. I can add in extra books if I want to, to supplement these, and I like that they are more of a spiral approach. Uh, the second grade one, I believe, gets more in-depth, but it revisits what they learned in first grade, so it has more of a review. I thought we would enjoy the mastery approach more, but I found that it really helps my kids better to use the spiral approach. They have more of a review, they have more confidence when they remember something, and I can personally see where they are at in learning or what they need to work on without having their lessons get worn out and cause for them to burn out. And if they need to work on something, I can always pick up another curriculum or one of their reference books for a refresher on it. Thank you so much, everyone, for checking out our first grade grammar past and present video. You can go ahead and comment down below what curriculum do you prefer for teaching grammar, what type of learning approach works better for your children, and what are some great books that you have found to incorporate into your grammar study. If you like this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and thank you so much again for visiting Rise, Read, Shine.